is going on guys it is a fine fine super fine day here in southwest pa and in today's episode um i would like to just kind of tell you guys what went down as far as um my uh my hospital visit and all that goes and i do want to apologize for the the audio and stuff i am having problems with my gopro i don't know what's going on i bought a brand new adapter i bought a brand new mic and I'm still getting these issues so unfortunately it seems like it might actually be the GoPro itself um, I get paid from YouTube at the end of October it's like hundred and fifty dollars or whatever so you know money's money's getting kind of tight but maybe I can uh, maybe I can swing a new a new GoPro with that money plus a little bit of my own funds or whatever but um, we'll just see what happens but let's uh, this just kind of get right into it. And uh, I hope that this is the last time I tell this. I'm so sick of telling this. I said it like 15 times trying to record it and telling a bunch of other people what happened. So hopefully this is the last time. So here we go. What went down, why I was in the hospital. So pretty much how this all went down was me and my neighbor, we started to work out together he really wanted to lose a lot of weight and get in shape and i missed the gym i i used to go to the gym a lot um and i missed it and i agree i i wanted to to go back with it and um so we we kind of just started out just working like just just kind of running and uh walking on the treadmill there was no real um there was no real workout routine yet, right? We're just kind of, kind of messing around, and we we probably ran that play for about I don't know, probably about two weeks or so. No, no, no. Eh, it was about a week. It was about a week, week and a half. And then um, one of the days, we kind of were like, hey, that's um, this kind of go lift some weights. Let's kind of screw around. And I'm like, yeah, I'm down 100%. So, you know, we, we started doing biceps, and that's what we were working out that day. We trained biceps, and, um, you know, we eased into it pretty good in the beginning part. And then towards the end of the, the workout, we really got crazy with it. Like, even more crazy than I was getting into it whenever I was at my pinnacle in the gym. Like, I don't... I never like push to failure because I'm I, I personally my physical fitness I, I believe that you know the uh, the um, the form is a lot more important than the weight and if you're just kind of like struggling to lift up weight but you have shitty form you're not really doing anything to begin with but for whatever reason this is what we were doing we were you know at a machine actually like a curl machine and just I mean like you know pyramiding all the way up to like 60 70 pounds or whatever the hell it was and all the way down and just going crazy with it man and uh it felt good it, it didn't feel bad and um you know so later on that day uh you know that was that was the that was the initial workout and um the next day i remember I was sore you know I was I was a little bit sore and um, I, I, was, I remember kind of joking around with uh, my friend who is now my girlfriend but at the time she was just my friend um, you know it's like oh yeah I can't even like you know bend my arm all the way you know because I mean that's kind of like a, a good workout right it's like a good sore I could right right then it was a good sore and um, so later on that evening is whenever everything kind of started rapidly going downhill i remember later on that evening my biceps were starting to hurt and i'm like oh okay this is you know more more intense than i thought and then uh it just kept on getting worse and worse and worse so that morning which would have been um which would have been a sunday my arms hurt so freaking 
bad. I I can't. The, the second worst pain I've ever felt. The first pain, first worst pain I ever had was a kidney stone. This was definitely a second. And my biceps hurt so freaking bad. And immediately I knew that this was a bad sore. Like I said, I'm not new to the gym. Um, and you know, not saying there's no ego or no nothing, but 2016 was the year of gains. I, that was my pinnacle of physical fitness. I believe that I've looked real good. I felt real good. Uh, everything was on point. And because of um, all of that, I can tell a good sore from a bad sore. And this was definitely a bad sore. So pretty much what ends up happening is like, like the only little bit of relief I can get is if my arms were kind of like like t-rex arms you know what i mean and even then was like really 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 painful like i i could definitely not stretch out my arm all the way and to stretch out my arm as much as i could which is probably about three quarters of the way took like 10 minutes like not exaggerating like it was excruciating pain and I was really wondering if I severely, severely tore my ligaments because it was, it was bad. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll just keep heat on it. So I went out, I don't know how I ride my bike, but I ended up taking the bike out to Walmart and getting a heating pad and biofreeze and all this stuff and just like, just kept on switching the heating pad from bicep to bicep and um it just like like the pain was kind of like i mean if, if you worked out and you like had that good sort it's that but like a hundred and twenty five thousand times worse like the, if you know good sort from bad sort you know what i'm talking about it, it i guess like a toothache is like just what it was but it just ached and ached and ached and ached and it progressively got worse it was not getting better it was it was unfortunately getting worse as saturday or as sunday excuse me was going going on and um i remember sunday night and this monday monday i had to be at work i'm a butcher and it was also labor day so uh sunday night i did not sleep a wink and when I say I did not sleep a wink, I mean I literally did not sleep. Like I was up all night. Uh, it's not one of those, oh, I didn't sleep last night and you know, I got like two or three hours. No, I, I did not sleep at all. I was in that much freaking pain. And you know, it sucked to do, but I had to, I had to call off work and it sucked because it was a Monday, so it was only me and one other guy in a meat shop on Labor Day. And I was just like, hey, dude, like, I physically cannot come in. Like, I can't ride my bike in. So I uh, I call off work, and he's like, hey, uh, you might want to go go to Med Express to get checked out uh, because it's possible it could be a blood clot. And so I'm kind of a hypochondriac. No, I am a hypochondriac. At this point in time, I kind of was a hypochondriac. It all started with a kidney stone. And this situation uh, really accelerated the whole thing. So I'm like, ah, oh, shit, all right. Um, and I called off work around six in the morning and Med Express didn't open up until like eight or nine. So eight or nine rolls around and I don't know how I get on my bike and make it there, uh, but I ride my bike, motorcycle, whatever you want, all the way over there. So they come, they sit me down, like, what's going on? I say, oh, hey, this is super stupid. I was working out. I'm real sore. I think this is just what it is. But it's really, really painful. So I just kind of want to double check, you know, make sure it's nothing severe. They're like, okay, yeah. So the doctor that I had at Med Express, I told him about it. And he's like, okay, um, do me a favor and uh, can you pee? I said, yeah. He's like, go ahead and pee in a cup for me. I said, okay. So 
I give him a urinalysis, and he comes back five minutes later, and he's like, all right, you have a lot, a lot of blood in your urine, but because you don't, we don't, we're not physically seeing urine or physically seeing blood. He's like these, uh, these blood tests or these uh, urinalysis can um, give a false reading with blood for muscle fiber, and he's like, I really think that you might have something called rhabdo. He's like, if I were you, I would go to the hospital right now. Just go to the hospital and get checked out. I said, okay. So I leave there and I get to the hospital and I, um, I, uh, I tell them, hey, this is what's going on and all this stuff. And they're like, okay, well, we don't think you have rhabdo, but we're going to go ahead and take your blood. Uh, and they came back and they said, you definitely have rhabdo. So they uh, started immediately putting me through IVs. Um, I think I was on 300 milliliters an hour or 250 milliliters an hour, um, which is a lot. They're pumping me of fluids and all that stuff. Um, and it's called a CPK. It's a creatine kidneys number or whatever it is and um, a normal value is like 30 to 100 and mine was 33,000 so it was very high after 5,000 you can go into kidney failure and I'll talk about that here in a second so well, I get, might as well talk about it now so pretty much what rhabdo is is whenever you either work out really hard a lot of guys get it in the military guys who've never been working out and all of a sudden they're working out get it um, car crashes motorcycle crashes anything with a, a blunt force crushing to the muscle will cause it and also um, older people get it if they fall and they can't get up and they're laying on the ground for a long period of time it's crushing their muscle so essentially you damage the muscle tissue so bad that literal muscle fiber and some sort of protein is leaking into your blood i don't know what kind of protein it is i don't think it's like regular you know eating protein i'm not an oc major um if you took ochem and you know what it is let me know because i'd be really interested to know actually you know what don't i don't care anymore <laughs> i don't care anymore um and uh the problem with that is the that protein and the that kind of muscle fiber can uh, clog up your kidneys like immediately right because again it's going through your blood and your kidneys filter out your blood so that can cause like acute kidney failure very very quickly so I'm kind of in the, the like in a hallway on a gurney getting pumped up with fluids right now so they come back and they're like okay your room's ready and I said, my room, what are you talking about? They said, dude, you're getting admitted. I said, are you serious? And they're like, oh yeah, you're not going, dude. You you have to stay here. And I'm like, okay. I've never stayed the night at a hospital. Never been stayed the night at a hospital in my life. Um, and uh, so I get to my room. And my room is gorgeous, man. My I have my own freaking room. This hospital in general is only like... It's not old. It's like less than 10 years old, I think. Beautiful room, beautiful view. Everything was awesome in that in that hospital room. Um, but you know, the the whole idea with uh, um, rhabdo is the only thing you can do for it is to pump your pump you full of fluids. So you dilute the solution that your kidneys can continuously pass all this stuff through right and uh, a CPK value has a, a half-life of 24 hours meaning every 24 hours it depreciates by half so if you have a CPK of 20 the next day will be 10 the next day will be 5 so on and so forth so that's the whole plan pump me full of fluids watch these numbers go down um, so the uh, the uh, the the first day wasn't so bad um you know i was kind of in, in good spirits for the most part um 
and then they take blood every night or technically every morning at two o'clock in the morning so and i'm still in a pretty good amount of pain by day but day one into day two so they take my numbers and my number went down like four thousand so not that great um it, it only went down by four four k and um you know i was starting to get starting to get antsy i'm starting to get a little antsy at this point in time because there, there's only two things that really scare me I'm, I'm really only scared of two things that's prison and laying in a hospital bed dying like the idea of not being able to go or have control of anything like that scares the shit out of me i'm starting to get antsy by this point in time so you know day two I, I remember the i remember and i wasn't i wasn't trying to be shitty with her but the 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 dietitian came in and she's like oh so you know we're gonna take your menu like what do you want to eat for breakfast lunch dinner i said look i don't care lady like i'm not staying long i don't care just do whatever you want like she's like what do you we don't care I said, no whatever it is is whatever it is i don't i don't care um i'm not staying long and she's like okay whatever you know she didn't say whatever but you know it's kind of like eh. And, um, so, you know, day two is starting to get a little bit, a little bit antsy. And, um, you know, I, I just, I really got to get out of the hospital. Um, they take blood two o'clock in the morning. This is day three. Day three, they get, they, uh, take my blood and they're like, okay, so it only went down by like a thousand. I'm like, well, isn't it supposed to go down by, like, half? They're like, yeah. I said, well, why did it only go down by two? They're like, we're not entirely sure. And this is, like, kind of like the nurse telling me. And by this point, Tom, I'm, I'm starting to get really anxious, man. I'm starting to get really super anxious because I'm like, what the fuck did I do to my body? Like, you know, like, because then you kind of start reading things on Reddit. You start reading things on Google and, like because the thing is dude like this is bad this can kill you like this literally can kill you anything over 5,000 um will get you into kidney failure yes i'm in a hospital but still that can still happen so i'm just super freaking anxious and all this stuff so yeah day three um uh my mom came i remember and um she uh she hooked me up with some some clothes and stuff because i'm like i don't know how long i'm going to be here now and um you know I'm, I'm starting to get really 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 anxious man this this is a bad day for me um you know i'm just overly thinking and all this stuff and and, and let me say this real fast i understand i'm being a bitch i understand i'm being a little bitch about it i get that it's just it's crazy what your brain will do like after this whole situation i got into a, a major rabbit hole with neurochemistry and all that stuff and um it um it gets uh what my buddy brett said my boss said elon musk is going to the butler rally tomorrow if elon musk is going to the butler rally tomorrow i am going to that rally I gotta work. I love Elon Musk so much. He is such an amazing individual. Um, anyways, but uh, uh, I shouldn't have read that text message because now I forgot what I was talking about. Um, oh, but it just kind of fell into a, a rabbit hole of, um, of uh, you know, uh, neurochemistry. And that's really interesting stuff. So, but again, I, I realize retrospect that I'm being kind of a little pussy about everything. Um, but you know it just kind of is what it is like i said i never really dealt with anxiety before until like this i mean i've, I've kind of had a little bit of anxiety but this was like next level anxiety stuff because my worst fear i'm now living in right my two fears prison and being in a hospital bed not being able to go i'm living my fear because i'm like what the, what is going on man so day four day four is the worst day day four is the worst day because they come in they take my blood work 
mind you, I started at 33,000, it dropped down to like 24,000, it went down to 23,000. On day four, it went right back up to like 34,000. At this point in time, I'm like not having a panic attack. I'm like, okay, what is going on, man? What's, what, what is going on? And all my doctors and nurses, especially my nurses, were really, really good except for the main doctor, Dr. Gauda, Gaudia, or whatever her name was. I did not like her. I did not like her um, because she was the one kind of overseeing everything. And I said, well, <coughs> excuse me, why would these numbers go up? She literally said exactly like this. Oh, I have no idea. So uh, you need anything else? I'm like, yeah, I need you to figure out what the hell is going on, man. She's like, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm like, okay, that's just great. You know, now I'm in a position where, and mind you, nine out of 10 nurses, nine out of 10 nurses or any healthcare practitioner that I've dealt with through this whole entire situation had no idea what Rabdo was. Nobody knew what it was. They all said that they had to Google it before they came up and saw me because they had no idea what it is because it's quote unquote rare in a sense, but not really rare, but kind of rare. So by this time, I'm having a really bad time. My chest hurts so bad. I tell them that they're like, oh, we'll, we'll give you an x-ray and make sure you know everything's good because I couldn't breathe, man. And I know it's anxiety at this point in time. I know it's anxiety. But, uh, you know, I'm like, fine, whatever. You know, they do the thing. And, dude, it was just, it was such a, a horrendous day. And I remember that whole time I was in the hospital, man. Again, my view was beautiful. But there must have been a massive high-pressure system over my, over Southwest PA that entire week. Because the skies were crystal clear blue. And that might sound nice, but if that's the same thing I'm looking at for like five freaking days, like not a cloud, nothing, like nothing. Like I felt like I was going insane. Like I legitimately felt like I was going insane. I just stayed the whole time, well the whole time anyway, I was praying and all that anyway. And you know, my mom came in to see me and she's, very upset I mean she's like crying because she's like what's going on I'm like I don't know I don't know she's like what are the doctors saying they say they don't know nobody knows what's going on like nobody knows what's going on and um you know uh we sat there you know we prayed and all this stuff and uh it, that, that was the first night that I took um some kind of anti-anxiety what was it I can't remember What's the things that every, like, rappers and all that talk about? Cutting, oh, not Percocet. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Xanny, Xanax, that's what it was. Xanny bar. It was a Xanax. Uh, it didn't make me do anything for me. How long is this video? 23 minutes and shit. Um, sorry for the cussing, by the way. It's kind of like an emotional video for me or whatever. But if you're interested, I guess you don't really care the, uh, the length of the video. So, um, so yeah, they, uh, Day five, four was really bad, man. Like, I mean, I've never had this kind of anxiety before in my life. And uh, uh, so, you know, finally, uh, finally get through day four. And, you know, day five, they come in, they take my blood. And, uh, you know, I'm like, hey, can you guys tell me like ASA freaking P what these numbers were? Are, and they're like yes and I must say I had great nurses great Christian nurses I really did I love them they were really 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 awesome and uh, they take my blood the morning of day five it's probably like four o'clock in the morning the one nurse comes in and um, you know she's doing my vitals and stuff and I said hey do they happen to have my uh, my blood work and she's like I'm not sure let me go check so she went out and she came back and she's like, you're not going to believe this. And I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck, man? She's like, it went down to 7,000. 
So it was 34,000 and went all the way down to 7,000. Dude, I was so freaking relieved because I'm like, I know I'm going home at this point in time. Like, I'm so freaking relieved. I'm still anxious, but I'm so relieved. Um, and I kept on asking a couple of the nurses. I'm like, well, why do you think it did that? Dude, like a lot, she, a lot of them thought that there was a misreading uh, the first that uh, one night where it uh, jumped back up. A lot of them, a lot of them thought that, um, but is near here nor there. And I, uh, I got, um, I got my, uh, I got my, um, what I'm trying to say. I got my blood. I didn't get nothing. I got my blood results, and they were good. And uh, I'm just kind of waiting. And I'm super anxious that they're not going to let me out. Like I don't know. I just felt like I wasn't ever getting out of this hospital. Like I could see my bike out the hospital window, and um, you know they uh, they uh, they they came in. Doctors came in, and this time it was like all three of my doctors. Um, oh, let me uh, let me backtrack real quick. I uh, I did have a um, I did have a um, uh, oh rheumatologist. He came in um, day four, and he was just kind of he was just kind of talking to me, um, or day uh, day three rather. He was just kind of talking to me, checking me out, making sure that I didn't have any continuous muscle uh, degeneration right but he didn't believe that I had anything and that next day is whenever it jumped up to 33,000 so that whole day also I'm thinking I have some kind of muscle degeneration like what is going on like this is like what is going on but you know day five back to 7,000 all the doctors are in the same room um, conveniently like they weren't supposed to be but they just all happen to be doing the rounds at the same time and this new doctor who I never seen she must be like like head of discharge or something and this is the part that kind of really made me mad. Um, my uh, my kidney specialist, he is like, yeah, yeah, you know, um, we are going to discharge you. You know, we can let discharge you, but um, you know, it's up to you um, which which test results you want to believe. And I didn't say this, but I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about, man? You're the doctor. Am I good or am I not good? Like, what's this, what's going on, man? You're telling me that it went from 33 to 7, and it's like, oh, well, it's up to you which one you want to believe. I want to get the fuck out is what I want, but I want to get the fuck out if I'm good to get the fuck out. I got a quick cussing. I'm sorry. That makes you look stupid. But I, I just need to go. I'm like, whatever. I went out. So they signed me out and all this stuff, and I was talking to my nurses, and, you know, uh, and essentially they, they they let me go it was kind of hard to walk for a while man because like you i guess you lose like two or three percent of like muscle mass or whatever like every day you're like just laying in the hospital i was there for like five days so like i was pretty pretty freaking weak for a little while there and um you know even like uh even like riding my motorcycle home it felt all right until I got home and my arms were like killing me. They're like so, so freaking sore, man. And um, I knew this was going to happen. I knew that me going home was not going to be the end of the problem and wasn't going to be the end of the, uh, the anxiety because it did get worse. Not the pain, not anything actually wrong, but just anxiety. Um, they sent me home, and what what really kicked it off was I was reading my discharge papers, and it said, um, oh, something discharge. Um, pretty much the patient wanted to be discharged. Like, I can't remember what word they used, but it was like a something, something discharge where, like, I wanted to go. And um, I'm, to me, in my head, I'm like, so what does that mean? I'm like, but I'm not Googling anything. I quit Googling things at that point in time, and I'm not Googling anything now, and that in itself has helped my anxiety. Um, but so I, uh, you know, I, uh, 
I, I have all this extra anxiety and I get a pound water. I'm drinking like five liters of water a day at this point. I'm still drinking a lot of water a day, even though everything's good. Spoiler alert. And um, so I, uh, you know, I'm just not doing anything. I'm just laying, I'm just laying down. And, um, you know, I, I set a doctor's appointment for the, uh, for like a few days later, which was awesome, where they would have to do my uh, my blood work and all that stuff. And I'm gonna hurry up and try and wrap this video up. I don't want to bore you with too many details because that that's like the main stuff of it. But pretty much, I had a bunch of anxiety, worried about every little thing. Like it, it gets gets to the point where, and there's a term for it, psych, psycho something psychosis or whatever. Pretty much when you think of a symptom, your body will give you those symptoms. You're not physically sick, but you will feel these things. Like, you know, for instance, the, the doctors throughout the whole thing kept on saying, do you have any numbness or tingling in your uh, in your feet or toes? No, didn't have it at the hospital. Well, you know it, 20 minutes after I was home, I'm getting super anxious. That's what happens. And this happened with a bunch of different things, man. But, you know, I end up scheduling the doctor's appointment. They do all, they, uh, he, my doctor's great. I love him, Dr. Wentworth, I love him. He, uh, he's talking to me and, um, you know, he gives me a blood test and all that. And I ask him, so what do you, what, what do you think happened? Like, what is the major thing that happened? He's like, I think you were extremely dehydrated and you definitely overworked everything well at least your biceps um and dehydration is 100 percent correct because and i'm not proud of this but up until this whole situation for like ugh, dude like 12 years i drank only coffee in the morning and that was it you know what i mean i mean that was my only water and that's coffee you know i i would always argue it's like well you know you put 12 cups of water in a coffee pot to get 12 cups of coffee therefore you know that was my logic not right obviously and I didn't believe that anyways I was just being funny and you know making excuses for myself but because I was super dehydrated and worked out how I worked out is what caused all this stuff to go down and um, I got a real bad case of it and bad case you know air quotes because a lot of people when they get rhabdo they're in like the hundred to two hundred thousand mark. Mine was thirty three thousand, but a lot of the people that have the hundred to two hundred thousand, they were doing military or they were in um uh, oh what's that? I don't want to say stupid. I don't want to offend anybody, but CrossFit because CrossFit is a full body thing, and uh, what you call it military is like a full body thing, and mine were isolated on the biceps um, and the day after that workout I did train legs which it's possible that I had it in my legs too and maybe that's what caused it my my CPK numbers to slowly dip maybe it was still technically rising as it was dipping and maybe that's what caused the spike because that was like two two or three days after I worked out my legs and that's kind of like the timeline of how all this stuff works out and all that but you know I did my blood test with my private doctor and my numbers are good they were normal he didn't think they were going to be normal he thought they were still going to be high completely freaking normal and um, that is the end of my anxiety that's a joke it was not because after that I was having other issues and I needed to see a GI doctor for a long time because this has been going on for a long time. And I finally was able to go see a GI specialist and um, everything is good, everything checked out. So, you know, no more issues. Don't want no more issues. My eye kind of hurts. Um, I noticed that I'm getting like, like I was always kind of like, you know real fuzzy in this one eye. I get to wear glasses and I think it might be seasonal allergies too but you know how long is this video 34 minutes absolutely unacceptable if you did stick around to this whole video thank you so much for listening to it uh, or watching it because I guess you're watching it um, that's my whole story um, I'm hoping to 
uh, get off of this video recording and start doing my other video recording for my uh, my other video that I'm hoping to be put out like very freaking soon uh, definitely within the next two or three days and then I got another video that I'm already planned out and uh, I got to get a GoPro and all that stuff but I'm not going to take any more of your guys' time again I really appreciate it if you listen to the whole thing thank you guys for reaching out a lot of you guys reached out seeing what was going on and I really do appreciate that I really do appreciate this community um, you know there, there's a lot of great motor vloggers there's a lot of great people on this channel and I, I really really do appreciate each and every single one of you guys so that's it that's my story um, and I will see you in the next one